Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Kundrik Prabhuji. I guess maybe he is not uh, in a good network. Okay. Uh, what about Peter Prabhuji? Prabhuji, are you able to do the Mangala Charan today? Uh, yes. Okay, let's do I'll, I'll, be, I'll be there as but well. My network is not... Fine, Prabhuji, I'll be doing it with you, okay. so no problem. Hare Krishna, okay. let's start. Om. Om. Jnana Timirandasya. Jnana Jnana Shalakaya. Chakshura Nulita Nyena. Tasmai Gurave Namaha. Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale. Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Gurum Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunata Tam Pitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savatutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitan Nyadevam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka he Krishna Karuna Sindhu Inaban Nagarpate Upesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Shabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakal Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Thank you very much Peter Prabhuji for doing the Mangla Charat so well. So today we have among us Rukmadas Prabhuji. Prabhuji, thank you very much for joining us. Danvat Pranam, please accept our humble obeisances from everybody on this group who have joined and are about to join. Prabhuji, we are reading the Bhagavad Gita as it is, and we are on chapter 18. And today our text is text 11. Prabhuji, I hand over to you. Okay. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, everyone. So you read the Sanskrit translation. Sanskrit is as follows. Nahi deha brita shakyam tyaktum karma niyashe shataha yashtu karma phala tyagi sa tyagi ti abhidiyate Translation by His Divine Grace is Bhakti Vedanta. Swami Shri Prabhupada ki jai. It is indeed impossible for an embodied being to give up all activities but he who renounces the fruits of action is called one who has truly renounced. Purport. Mother, you can read the purport. Hare Krishna, purport by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. In, it is said in the Bhagavad Gita that one can never give up work at any time. Therefore, 
he who works for Krishna and does not enjoy the fruitative results, who offers everything to Krishna, is actually a renouncer. There are many members of the International Society of Krishna Consciousness who work very hard in their office or in the factory or some other place. And whatever they earn, they give it to the society. Such highly elevated souls are actually sannyasis and are situated in the renounced order of life. It is clearly outlined here how to renounce the fruits of work and for what purpose fruits should be renounced. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, my apologies. Uh, I was a little bit out. Uh, my obeisance is to Rukma Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Our obeisances to you as well, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we'll go to the discussion. We'll discuss the main points. The first point Sri Prabhupada explains is earlier explained in the third chapter even the body cannot work without working. To work is a must. Everyone by nature has to work. And the body is designed in such a way that if you don't work, the body will slowly start freezing and then it will become lazy and many diseases can follow. To work is a must. Now in this section of Srimad Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita, in a couple of verses, Krishna is explaining the word renunciation, tiaga. This chapter began with this question, if you go to the first verse of this chapter, it says, I wish to understand the purpose of renunciation, tiaga, and the renounce order of life, sannyas. That means two main subjects of this chapter. And Krishna is explaining at length so many things. And up to now, Krishna has already explained renunciation in three different modes. In the mode of ignorance, means consists of giving up one's prescribed duties because of illusion. Now that is called renunciation out of illusion. Many people think, oh, it's not my duty, I'll not do. And out of illusion, they don't do work. Now that is what of ignorance. And the moral passion consists of giving up, giving up prescribed duties because of fear or because they appear troublesome. Some people say, oh, I'm scared of this renunciation or people renounce uh, maybe out of fear or maybe because it is troublesome, material life is troublesome, but that is not renunciation. Now in the mode of goodness, Krishna says that consisting of one's prescribed duties because they ought to be done and abandoning attachment to the fruits of one's work. That is very important. Now that is renunciation in the mode of goodness. So in the different modes, different kinds of renunciations are there. Now, this particular verse is speaking about pure goodness. That means renunciation in Krishna consciousness. He says, consisting of performing one's prescribed duties in Krishna consciousness and employing the fruits of one's work for the satisfaction of Krishna. So even Krishna has said, not once, but several times. If you go to the third chapter, if I'm not wrong, verse number 19, Krishna said the same thing in a slightly different way. If you go to 3.19. Tasma dashakta satatam karyam karma samachara. Ashakto hi acharan karma param apnoti purusha. Therefore, without being attached to the fruits of, fruits of activities, one should act as a matter of duty, for by working without attachment, one attains the supreme. The principle is the same. And many, many times, work, but to work while work for Krishna, that is very important and give the results to Krishna. You find that, let's say you're given some work and while working, you have to think of Krishna. Anybody recalls any verse where Krishna says, you work at the same time, think of me. Anybody remembers any verse? Anybody a good memory? We have done this verse. 
many, many times. And here the worst is in the eighth chapter. Krishna tells, I think it's verse number seven. Tasmat sarveshu bhati sorry, tasmat sarveshu. Then mam anasmar yudhyachai, mayar pita mano buddhi. This is in eight, seven. Krishna said that even while working, performing your prescribed duty, you think of me. And that is very, very important. I can read the verse again for you. 8.7. It says, Asmat sarveshu kaleshu mamanusmar yudhyacha mayar pita mano buddhi mameva shasi asamshaya. Translation is therefore, Arjun, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna. At the same time, carry out your prescribed duties of fighting with your activities dedicated to me and your mind and fixed on me. You will attain me without doubt. Now, if you take a little glimpse here into this, this verse of the eighth chapter, so let's say you are Arjun. And Arjun is told, okay, I'm going to write your chapter to charity to Krishna says, which Krishna did. And Arjun, Arjun was told, you fight. <laughs> and even while fighting, you think of me. Mm. So if you are in the place of Arjun, can you do that? I would say it's not possible. Because your mind is completely in fighting. You find that in fighting, Sri Prabhupada explains in the lecture, one has to use anger, one has to use skill, one has to use determination and courage. That's a Kshatriya work. A Kshatriya when he fights, and if the opposite party is, if is slow or weak, or he's not ready to fight, then the Shatri from this side will try to speak words in such a way that it will provoke anger in them. In this way, Shatri fights with Shatri. Shatri fighting is a kind of a sport, not out of hatred. And this, during this fight, it's not easy to think of Krishna. There's a beautiful story of Jagannath, uh, Lord Jagannath. Uh, may, many, maybe, uh, what do you call it? Partha Brahma knows the story, but I know the story briefly. There was about time, there was a king called Pushyotam in Jagannath Puri. He was the ruler of Orissa. And he went to South India. And he became friends with the South Indian king. And in return, the South Indian king said, okay, I'm going to hand my daughter to you for marriage. And they had agreed to do so. And after that, King Pushyotam came back and the marriage to be, was to be done later. So in meantime, the king or the South Indian king, he sent his, um, one of the ministers to go and check how the king is. And at that time, what the king was doing, it was Jagannath Rathyatra and it's a rule since thousands of years, that the king of Orissa sweeps the road. So when you're sweeping the road, uh, this minister of that South Indian king, he saw it. And somehow other, he manipulated the, the message in such a way that don't give your daughter to this king. He's a sweeper. <laughs> he's, a, he's a sweeper. How can uh, a king sweep the road? But he did not explain that he's a pure devotee. Anyway, this message when it went to South India, to the king. South India king Raja ka? Prabhu. Padmavati. Padmavati, yeah. Okay, anyway. So when the king got this message, he decided I'm not going to send my daughter there to, a, to someone who, who sweeps roads. How can I give my daughter to him? So his daughter, as uh, I recall also, is called Padmavati. So Padmavati was told not to go there. Now when this King Pushyotam of Puri, he got this reply, he became very angry. So he went to fight. He went to fight till South India with the whole of his army and, the, and he lost very badly. And he came back. See, he, 
anyway, he was a devotee of Krishna, Vaishnava. So he prayed to Lord Jagannath. But I lost the battle. So Jagannath asked him, during the battle, did you take me with you? He said, no. Did you think of me? He said, no. You fought your battle out of anger. Go and fight again. I'll be with you. So again, Pushyotam goes the next day to fight with the South Indian king. Now, <clears throat> as the army leaves the Puri, heading south, before even the army is going, there were two soldiers, one on a black horse, one on a white horse. They were like much ahead. And they reached quite far. And then on the road, there was a lady sending, selling chash, buttermilk. And so they told the lady, you have to drink chash. We are very tired. So the lady gave them chash, plenty of chash, and they drank so much of chash. And then the lady said, you pay for it. They said, we don't have any money. <laughs> he said, that, but the king who is coming, you have to pay for it. So instead, I can give you my finger ring. So the, uh, the soldier removed his ring and gave it. This is when the king comes, you give him the ring and the king he pay you back. And it did happen like that. King Pushyotam, when he came there, the lady stopped. When the king stopped for the chance, because it was quite hot, so after drinking chance, he said, your two soldiers who look like captains, one was a bit dark, one was very bright, there, they took charge and they gave him this ring. They didn't pay for it. So the order, I mean, they told us to give this ring to you and you can repay us. So the king took the ring and we looked at the ring. The ring was the ring of Lord Jagannath. So he realized that the way Lord Jagannath said, promised it happened like that. So those two soldiers, one was Krishna, one was Balaram. And they went for a fight. This time, the king won the fight. When the rule in those days is, if you win the fight, then the deity, worshipable deity of that king will come to your kingdom. So his worshipable deity was Ganesh. So he brought Ganesh back along with Padmavati. And put told Padmavati to be taken care of by his minister. He said, I'm not going to marry this, this woman. Let her suffer. <laughs> so that was in the story of Lord Jagannath. And Ganesh, even if you go today to Lord Jagannath temple, just behind Jagannath, you see this Ganesh. It's still there, even now. And later on, of course, uh, Padmavati, it was no fault on Padmavati's side anyway. The fault was on the king's side. And Padmavati was very chaste and a nice woman. So somehow the, uh, the, minister, uh, the king had told the minister that this Padmavati should actually be married to a sweeper. So when, again, when the Rathyatra came, when the king was sweeping, he brought Padmavati dressed like, nicely like a bride. He says, the only sweeper I can find is you. <laughs> In this way, the, the girl, but Mahavati was married to the king and then lived happily after. So if you understand this story, it is making a point that when he went first time for the war, he was not thinking of Lord Jagannath and he had not asked for the blessing of Jagannath. But in this second time, the first one he did, it, he did as a challenge or an anger. But the second war he fought was with Jagannath in front. So Krishna is saying in this words that Whenever you do any Krishna consciousness activity, do it for Krishna. At the same time, give the results to Krishna. Now, what does results mean? You'll find that as soon as the work is finished, either we become too happy or we become too sad. If all goes well, if it was a success, you feel so good. Oh, I did very nice seva within your mind, which is a bit dangerous. It can make you proud. And if you lament, oh, I didn't do very little, now you know, that is bad. But if you give the fruits to Krishna, there's no question of lamentation. No, no question of celebrating. So there's no question of pride either. That's why devotees, when they do any seva for Krishna, 
Even in the beginning of Seva, they are chanting Hare Krishna. While doing service, they are chanting Hare Krishna. At the end of the service, they are still chanting Hare Krishna. That means those who have been chanting recently, we had a very nice seminar. I think many of you attended also. Maharaj made a very nice point. Uh, but he's only in his Bhakti Guru Maharaj. He said that those who have done, those who have lived in the temple and done all the activities, attended all the programs, especially the morning program, at least for 15 years, they get the test for chanting. And they can't forget. And which is true. So if you go, if you already got on the test for chanting Hare Krishna, you'll find that while doing work, you'll think of Krishna by chanting Hare Krishna. Even you can't think of Krishna, but the habit of chanting Hare Krishna will go on and you'll be connected to Krishna. In the same way, at the end of your work, you think of Krishna. So in this way, giving the results means happiness, distress, success, no success, honor, dishonor, cold, heat, whatever it is. Everything is for Krishna. Everything should be given to Krishna. It's like if you go to ninth canto, there's a story of Nabaga's son. He, he had uh, four sons and they cheated him out of the kingdom, the younger brother, because he came late from the Guru. He stayed a bit longer. <clears throat> and he was told that we already distributed the wealth amongst ourselves. For you, we can give you our father. The father said, I am an old man. What will you do with me? He says, but I can show you where to get your, get your, your portion. You can get plenty of wealth. So you're told to go to a certain yagya. He said, on the third day of yagya, they'll make some mistakes. So you help them, the brahmanas. And I'll teach you the mantra. When you are able to teach them the mantra, they'll be very happy and they'll give the wealth to you. And it happened like that. So when he got the wealth, when he was taking the wealth, a very dark person appeared, a blackish person. He said, the wealth is mine. He says, but I was told by my father that when the Brahmins give you, you take it. That means it is mine. He said, no, go and ask your father. Again, he had to go to his father. And, the, and he asked the father, that there is a man asking for all the wealth. So is he supposed to, is he the custodian or am I the custodian? And the king said, actually, he is the custodian. He said, why? He said, he's not a black man. He's Lord Shiva himself. Lord Shiva disguises a black man. So give it with all your pleasure. Give it. So he gave, he gave all the wealth to Lord Shiva. Then Lord Shiva manifests his actual form. Very nice, beautiful form of Lord Shiva. And he said, I don't want anything. All the wealth is yours. So when you do anything for Krishna, then you'll find that you not only enjoy it, but when you give the results to Krishna, it means you feel liberated, free. Oh, I didn't, I didn't do it for me. I did it for Krishna. Here Prabhupada gives an example. There are many of our members in our society who own businesses, factories. Pundrik is one of them. So they work very hard and whatever profits they, give, they get, they give to Krishna. And Prabhupada says it very clearly that these people are actually sannyasis. Sannyasis means true renouncing. What sannyasi means? One who registers, renounces fruits of results of work is called a sannyasi. Most of us think that sannyasi means one who is holding a danda. You see, like I have the picture of my Guru Maharaj. So he's holding the danda. So you may think that maybe only people who hold a tanda is a sannyasi, but no. Anyone who renounces fruits of action is a sannyasi. So <clears throat> we should keep this sentence in our mind and never forget it, that we can become sannyasis even by staying home, even by working in our factory, even by working in our offices. If you give the results to Krishna, then it shows us that we are sannyasis. And a secret to renouncing the work is in Chitra and Chaturjamrita explain whoever renounces the work and becomes devoted to Krishna, he gets the mercy of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Straight, which is not easy, very, very difficult. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy looks very easy, but actually it's not easy. And once you get it, 
We are very, very fortunate. I'm giving you a, a verse from Chitan Chakra that if you do Tyaga, Tyaga for Krishna, Tyaga means renounce the results for Krishna, then Krishna is very happy. Another thing Sri Prabhupada explains is it does not matter what work you do, in which capacity you do. But if you dedicate all the fruits for the satisfaction of Krishna, that is called perfect renunciation. Perfect renunciation. Now, what is perfect renunciation? It's also explained in the sixth chapter. Just go to sixth chapter. I think it's verse number 10. <clears throat> If you go to the purport of 610, 610, if you go to the third paragraph, just a minute, yeah, one, two, three, three. Uh, would you like to read, Mataji? Thank On my Bible, page 278, verse number six, chapter six, verse number 10. Have you found it? Yes, Mataji. Yes, All these perfections starts from there, yeah? Yes, Ramji. All, okay, these all these perfections and precautions are perfectly executed when one is directly in Krishna consciousness because direct Krishna consciousness means self-abnegation, wherein there is very little chance for material possessiveness. Srila Rupa Goswami characterizes Krishna consciousness in this way. Anashaktaksha Vishayam Yataram Upayunjita Upayun I can read the Sanskrit. Okay, Krishna Sambande Yukta Momukshubi Parityago Vairagyam Falgu Khatyate. Read that in our translation. When one is not attached to anything, but at the same time accepts everything in relation to Krishna, one is rightly situated about possessiveness. On the other hand, one who rejects everything without knowledge of, it, of its relationship to Krishna is not as complete in his renunciation. Bhakti mm. Rasamrita Sindhu 2.255 to 2.56. Yeah, so Bhakti Rasamrita means nectar of devotion. So the nectar of devotion, two sides of renunciation are explained. That one can, one can use everything in the service of Krishna. That is real renunciation. And one may think, oh, this cannot be used in, in the service of Krishna then his renunciation is not complete. That's why real renunciation means working in any capacity and any kind of work you do, but you give the result to Krishna. Whatever result you get, you give to Krishna. Uh, there's a practical example given in Chaitanya Chattu. Kholavi Chishrida is the devotee of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he was very poor. And he would, uh, what do you call it? He would make cups of banana leaves. You know, banana leaves. In India, you get those. Kole. They call it kole in Bengal. I don't know. I think in Gujarati also they call kole. So those are cups. So when he, he would make the cups, he would sell them to the pilgrims passing there. And whatever profit you will get, he would use half of that profit in the worship of River Ganga. And Chitin Mahaprabhu knew this. That this man or this devotee is very pure. Now, he is so attached to this. I mean, Chitanya Mahaprabhu loved it so much that on another day, he, I mean, he would come and tease him. And when his life, and later on, Chitanya Mahaprabhu revealed that actually he's very dear to I mean, this devotee is very, very dear to him. So, Sri Prabhupada explains that we should follow the same principle. As Kolavecha Shrita, that whatever profit we gain, we should give at least 50% away in the service of Krishna. That is called renouncing the results of work. Now, many of us may be just simple laborers. Maybe you are working 
factory, as a laborer in a factory, or maybe you're a manager in the factory, maybe you're not the owner of the factory, what do you do? So at least you should give away at least 10%. Whatever your earning is, 10% give it away. And this way, not only will your wealth remain pure, but at the same time, you'll have that confidence that though I'm not working in the temple or directly for Krishna, but I'm giving the results for Krishna. Now let's go to 12th chapter now, which gives you another exact, another clearance so this, this point can be understood very, very nicely. 8, 10, if I, I'm sorry, 12, 10, if I'm not wrong. No, it's 12, 11, 12, 11. You can read the translation if you have the book with you. Anybody? Is it number 10, are we asking? For? No, it's 11, 11. 12, 11. Chapter 12. Yeah, what's the mail? Yeah, who is, who is reading? Okay. Rajkishori Mataji, are you able to read or I can read? I have it here. Athaitad apsakto si kartum mad yoga mashrita sarva karma falatyagam tata kuru yatat mavan. Read the translation. If, however, you are unable to work in this consciousness of me, then try to act, giving up all results of your work and try to be self-situated. So now this works makes it more clear again. And sometimes we cannot work directly in subconscious. Sometimes people feel guilty working, but at the same time, I used to feel that I'm not serving Krishna directly, but this, this actually gives the answer. You may not be working directly for Krishna, but whatever results here you're getting, do it for, give the results to Krishna and remain self-situated. Self-situated means even while working, you think of Krishna. That is called self-situated. Don't forget your constitutional position. Any one of you can say what is our constitutional position in English or in Sanskrit, whatever you know. Anybody likes to try? What is our constitutional position? We are the servants of the servants of the servants. We are a servitor. Okay. Anybody else like to try? Krishna Das. Yes. We are Krishna. The exact words is Jivera Sarupaya Krishna Nitya Das. You can write this sentence, those who are writing. Very important line because you have to actually learn this line by heart. Jivera Sarupaya. Krishna Nitya Dasa. The sarup of a jiva means the, the identity of a living entity is that he is an eternal servant of Krishna. That is our sarup. So that should not be written. Prabhupada emphasizes this line again and again. And the meaning why he emphasizes this line? Because if you remember this line, you're not going to Maya. The moment you forget this constitutional position, the Maya is there to grab you. Now, when Maya grabs you, immediately you forget Krishna. If you don't want to forget Krishna, don't forget your constitutional position. Just like there is a king, he's always a king. And the servant is always a servant. The servant cannot claim that he's become the king. That is the meaning. So Krishna remains our eternal Swami, means our master. And if he's the master, we are his eternal servant. So you never forget this, what we call our position, Krishna's supreme position and our humble position as a servitor. So if you keep this position in our mind, there's no question of Maya. Maya cannot do anything to you. Whether you are doing any kind of work, Maya will never touch you. You'll always remain clean. In the few chapter, while teaching Karma Yoga, for devotees, Krishna says that just like a lotus leaf, though it is touching the water, yet if you lift the, the leaf, it, no water will cling to it. So that is a devotee's life. Though he is in the material world, but the Maya cannot do anything to the devotee. Maya, devotee is pure. And when you say it's a devotee, it means all devotees. 
anyone who is a devotee of Krishna, at least maybe even a Madhya level or an advanced level, we are not talking of the neophytes, new ones. No, we are talking of Madhya, halfway, or advanced devotees. They are pure people. And very pure that Maya cannot do anything to you. I mean, anything to you to them because they never forget their constitutional position. They always remember and they know that I am the servitor of Krishna. So why should I misuse my position? Or why should I jump my lines? That is the meaning. I stay within my lines. What you call in Sanskrit, Mariada. Mariada means staying within the border. Do not jump this line. It's dangerous. Because sometimes what happens? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains that sometimes you become a bit popular and then people will come and bow down to you, touching your feet, and there's every chance that you may think, oh, now I've become so famous and people are going down to me, people are greeting me. So you become, there's a, every tendency you can become puffed up. That means you are jumping the line. So Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, who is the spiritual master of Shri Prabhupada, he says, even if someone bows down to you, what do you do? You say two words, Daso, Ashmi. I am your servant. At least say it in the mind. So you, are, you will not be cheated by this so-called honor shown by the people. It is natural. When you become devotee, people, they, they show you respect to you. But don't be cheated. That respect is meant for your spiritual master. And later it passes on to Krishna. So never forget that. In this way, you will never jump your line. You will always stay in your constitutional position. In this way, you can never give up service to Krishna. And when he says service in any capacity, it means including menial services. Let's say someone says, clean up the temple. Devotee should be ready. Clean up the utensils. You should be ready. Wash up the temple car. You should be ready. Throw the garbage. You should be ready. We had in Prabhupada's times, there's a very famous devotee. All of you know this devotee. And he's the only devotee Prabhupada said we should celebrate his appearance daily. And then his name was Jayanand. Jayanand was very dear to, Krishna, to Sri Prabhupada. And he actually used to drive taxi. Imagine he was a he had a degree in mechanical engineering, but uh, to earn money here to drive a taxi so that the proper uh, mission can go on. So every evening when you bring the money, you put it on the table, tell Prabhupada, this is the money for you. And later on, he is the one responsible for building most chariots in America. This is the same, same Jayanam. But he was so humble that he would be working whole day. Now, one, and he was a temple president, imagine. And one day a couple came into the temple. And he came to the, I mean, they came to the office. He says, we want to see the temple president. So he was called. He said, just, we just saw him. He was throwing garbage. Is he the one? He said, yes, this is our temple president. So we can learn from him that he's ready to do any work in any capacity. So in this way, Chitra Mahabharata himself has taught us <clears throat> while cleaning up Gundicha temple, because when the chariot goes to from Jagannath Puri to Gundicha temple on the Rathyatra day, before that, Gundicha temple is about five, four or five kilometers away. Uh, I don't know how many exactly kilometers, maybe path bring from the nose. But anyway, before the temple reaches there, the temple is cleaned up. And Chitra Mahabhu himself would clean the temple. Imagine, he's the head of this, of all the devotees. He himself would clean the temple, even wash the temple. And you can read this past time in chapter the cleansing of Gundicha temple. That is the name of the chapter. And we can learn that the devotee, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is exemplifying by his own character that a devotee should work for Krishna in every capacity. And you'll find that in any place of worship, a lot of humility is to be shown. If you go, if you happen to have gone to a Gurudwara, I don't know if you have Gurudwara in Eldorado. Now, if you go to a Gurudwara, you'll find that some people take up a duty that when you remove your shoes and when you go on inside, they, they will clean up your shoes and 
put it nicely. Now that is humility, a lot of humility. And this humility helps us to stay in that constitutional position. Okay, the time is up. I've gone a bit far. Yeah, two minutes. If you have any questions, you can ask. Thank you, Guruji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you very much for uh, this explanation of text 11, <clears throat> chapter 18. Are there any questions or comments? While everybody's thinking of the question yes, and uh, comments. Yeah, thank you, Prabhuji, for a nice explanation about how we are supposed to be renounced from our duties and yeah. everything <laughs> supposed to be dedicated to Lord Krishna. The Prabhuji, sometimes we are doing for Krishna or for, uh, for the Lordship and um, sometimes see, we feel a satisfaction in our heart. So is that pride? Uh, it can be pride, but we should know that uh, if you do it out of pride, that should not be pride, but it should be confidence. Do not mix up the word confidence with pride. When you're doing your service with, with a lot of confidence, so don't take that confidence to be pride. The pride is very different. Pride is to become puffed up. But confidence means you do it with full capacity. Make sure that everything goes well and make sure that even you engage everyone to do that service. Share your service. So you're, the only person who can answer is your son, whether you are doing it out of pride or are you doing it out of confidence. Is it okay? Arthur Yes, Prabhuji, yes. Thank you, Prabhu. Don't become proud because the, the body is given by Krishna, energy is given by Krishna, service is given by Krishna, and the service which you are able to do is by the mercy of your spiritual master. Yes. So there's no question of pride. No, I'm not telling pride. I'm telling about yeah. Prabhu's satisfaction. No, no, I'm, I'm telling you that uh, satisfaction is good. But still, Sri Prabhupada says, even when you're getting satisfaction, don't think that that is enough. Do more. Keep doing more and more. Always keep a room for improving. So you improve and improve and become better and better and better. For example, from one Ekadashi to another Ekadashi, uh, His audience Gopal Krishna Maharaj explains that you should judge how well you did your rounds in those two weeks. In the next two weeks, you do better than that. And if something went down, then you try to find out why my rounds went down. Analyze yourself and you'll get the answer. It needs a lot of humility and help from other devotees. Was I chanting nicely? Was, my, was I speaking every word, words, every word going into my ear? Uh, was I not too proud? Because the, the key to chanting is to chant out of humility, asking for blessings of Krishna, love of Krishna, then you can chant nicely. If you chant out of pride, your chanting will go down. So every two weeks, you have to assess your chanting. In this way, your pride will go down and down and down. That's why in the morning we say, one chakalpata rubascha. Why do we say this? So that we bow down to other devotees and ask for their mercy, that if I am proud, let my pride go down. Because pride, Krishna does not like pride. Krishna loves humility. So pride has to be replaced with humility. Okay? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Are there any other questions? Prabhuji, I have a question till everybody is thinking. Uh, Prabhuji, you said that um, you uh, if you can't, um, uh, you can give 10% of your uh, income to the temple and that will um, uh, mean that you are doing some service in the temple. But in the temple, Prabhuji, there are lots of services. So which one should we be giving it to? Food for life or yes. for the devotee? No. Wherever you think it will be used. So main thing is to be given to the temple and let the temple decide where it has to be used. That is not our, I mean, duty to ask where it is going to be. Wherever the
the time of the usage. And if it be 10%, I can should buy some grains, some vegetables, fruits. That is also in kind you can do it. But 10% must be given away. And that is the meaning. Prabhupada explains in one lecture that may not be in our Eastern temples, but in many Vaishnava temples, they uh, near the deity, they keep uh, three pots. One pot, you can always put sugar inside. Another pot, you put rice. Another one, you can put ghee. You know, people will come with some ghee. Those who don't have money. Because formerly, people used to be very simple-minded. And all that will be used in the service of Krishna. I've seen our elderly ladies, they will bow down, they'll put a coin in the one for the donation box. It may think, oh, they are only putting 10 shillings, 20 shillings, but if you count it for the whole year, how much will it be? It will be plenty. So never take darshan free, always give something to Krishna. Scripture says, never visit Krishna free or your spiritual master free. Whenever you go to see your spiritual master, always give something. That will keep us our our piety and it will keep our, us our humility and make us understand or remember our constitutional position. Okay, anybody else? Any more questions or comments? Prabhuji, I saw at the Bhaktivedanta Manor, they had a place before you enter that people were putting ghee and rice and uh, thing so it does happen even in Iskon temples. Okay, because I've not been there, so I don't know. In Arabi, we used to take. If somebody wants to bring ghee, we used to take. You now people bring. There are some families who bring so many things. Like every month they bring uh, atta means flour. They bring ghee, one tin of ghee, some sugar, some rice, which is good. That is called renouncing the fruits of action. Thank you, Prabhuji. Are there any other questions or comments? There are no questions or comments. I'll hand over to Path Prabhuji. Path Prabhuji, kindly close the session. Before you close the session, I think everybody has learned this line. Jivera Sarupahaya Krishna Nitya Asha. Jivera Sarupahaya Nitya Krishna Dasa. This will help you remember this and write it on a paper if you can't memorize it. It's a very simple, but it helps you. It's very dear to Prabhupada also. Okay. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Uh, uh, I request all the devotees, please unmute yourself and chant Hare Krishna mantra for a glorification of. It's Gresh Rukma Prabhuji. Although same time, I thanks all the devotees who joined in this platform. Uh, please chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vansha Karpa Vansha Karpa I think we can see some hand is raised. Who is it? Somebody is raised their hand. It's yours. Prabhuji, it's your hand. Okay, okay. Now, before we close, on Tuesday, in our Nairobi temple, we are going to recite the whole Gita. I don't know if you are going to do it in Eldoret. So Tuesday, I may not be able to attend the class because we are right. going to have six to eight whole whole Bhagavad Gita, right from the verse number one, Dharma Shete Kuru Shetra, right up to the and Yatha Yogeshwara Krishna Tata Ganudara Arjuna. So you'll excuse me on Tuesday, yeah? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Madas Prabhuji ki jai.